Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, From Insight to Action, Building an Understanding of Your Customers to Drive Results. Before we get started with today's webinar, just some brief introductions. Firstly, to Box UK, who as a web software and UX consultancy specialise in user-centred design, iterative development, and the optimisation of digital platforms to support ambitious organisations in achieving their goals. And with me today, I have Adam Jones, who is one of our account managers here at Box UK. Just a quick note before we start that if you've got any questions, um, you can submit them to the Box UK handle on Twitter or also using the chat function in this webinar. And with all that said, I'll hand over to Adam. Great, thanks, Emma. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Adam. As Emma said, I'm the account manager at Box UK. Uh, I've been here for around sort of four years now uh, and spent a lot of my time working with our clients across digital transformation projects. Um, and a lot of those projects are uh, clearly user-led, user-centered um, user design-led. So today's um, webinar is all about uh, taking insight to action. So taking customer insight that you gain and applying that to the betterment uh, of your digital products. So why do organizations have to think like that in today's uh, landscape? What, what are the drivers behind that? Well, I'm sure you'll, you'll probably recognize a number of these brands. These are what you might term as disruptive organizations, so the likes of Uber, uh, Netflix, Amazon. They're all organizations that have really come into markets that have been long established and really disrupted them. Just to pluck out, I guess, one particular example, Tesla. It's a, a brand that's been around for about 10 years now, and it's already worth more in terms of value than the likes of Ford which is an organization in the same market that's been around for over 100 years. I mean, why, why is it that this is the case? Well, these organizations really listen to what the customer wants, and they shape themselves around what the customer needs. So why is that important? So how do you actually come, become truly user-centered? Well, it all starts with you know, understanding your customers. So not just having a rough idea of who your customers are, it's about really understanding in intricate detail exactly who your customers are and what they want from you. So how do you go about doing that? Well, nowadays there's so much data available to, to everyone, um, pretty much at, at the touch of a button. There's lots of different um, places that you can gather your data from, whether that's ethnographic data through your CRM, most organizations now, you, you probably yourselves, run uh, things like Google Analytics on, on your website. So you have a really clear idea of how your customers are, are engaging with you. But also, you've got other metrics, such as um, your net promoter score. Um, I mean, many organizations use this, and this is uh, reg regards how referenceable you are as, as an organization. So it scores you on, on a score of uh, 1 to 10. Now, this has become even more important these days uh, in, in the social media age where uh, companies reference each other, uh, customers really will think with their feet. So having a good score in this area is important. Uh, adding this to, to the matrix that we have here really helps you build a picture of, of who your customers are and what they want from you. And along the way, you might actually find out some really interesting things that might actually surprise you a little bit. Um, when we're working with the RCN across their website re-platform, uh, this is a, a large uh, transformation project uh, that took, took place over the course of a couple of years. Um, the starting place for this was to look at their analytics. And we identified through, through a quick scan that actually 60% of the traffic was going to just 250 key pages. Now that's, that's out of a website with more than 10,000 pages, a massive content-heavy website. So if you can identify trends like that quite early on, it really helps you understand where your customers are going, but also hone some of those investments. So not only do you need to know who your current customers are, you really need to understand who your future customers are or your prospective customers. So how do you go about establishing that? This is where you reference your well, SWOT analysis, really. So it's looking at things such as internal factors. So it's understanding where you are as a business at the moment and where you're trying to get to, or we call it the as-is in, in 2B positions. This is where you need to reference back your, your business strategy, understand what your plans for growth are, 
and also perhaps how um, your product name range might diversify over that period. Not only do you need to you know, look internally, you need to look at the external market. So we're obviously in quite uh, interesting time at the minute with Brexit, which is throwing up an awful lot of uncertainty. It's also throwing up a, a lot of um, you know, possibility uh, for, for change. So the marketplaces are clearly changing, changing daily. Um, we're experiencing things such as an aging population, um, which may impact uh, how you address certain audiences. Um, and an aging population is clearly uh, quite different to how millennials interact with you or the Snapchat generation. So it's really important to understand with your, your product offering how you're targeting uh, these different audiences because they clearly will expect a different sort of experience when they engage with you. This is where personas are, are, are quite useful and quite important. Um, a cliche kind of marketing term is you, you try and target everybody, you end up targeting nobody at all. So personas are a really great way of uh, being able to refine and, and hone exactly who you're trying to target. Um, they, they give you an idea of you know, the goals uh, of this audience, perhaps what the pain points are. And you can then flip those to turn them in, into opportunities. So the, these are a great uh, thing to be able to share around the business to help visualize who you're trying to target. Uh, and obviously visuals um, can, can work very well um, across you know, different stakeholder groups when you're trying to um, explain uh, perhaps marketing plans or targeting plans. So once you, you've got an idea of who your existing customers are and also your prospective customers, you need to uh, understand how they're currently being served. We've touched on a, a couple of these um, methods already, but this is where you reference back to some of the classic or user testing uh, arsenal, if you will. And this ranges um, from you know, quick and dirty techniques right through to you know, more in-depth testing. So just a list we've got there um, at the top, you've got things such as five second tests. Now these are a brilliant way of getting a quick comparison of, of how customers view your, your site or your products against competitors. Um, these are tests that you can quite uh, quickly uh, run online. Uh, the data that you get from this is, is perfect for being able to um, explain to you know, senior stakeholders exactly how your perhaps brand perception is going down. Um, Going a bit further down the line, there's more detail. So, so going into online surveys, I'm sure everyone's probably uh, used SurveyMonkey or certainly filled out a SurveyMonkey form. Um, but these are a great way of, of getting feedback quite quickly from hundreds, potentially thousands of, of targets that, that you're looking to uh, gather some information from. Then moving into more of the, the kind of more UX uh, standard testing methods around card sorting and tree testing. Now these are really good ways of quite quickly identifying how easy or difficult uh, people are finding it to, to navigate your, your software solutions. So whether that's um, people trying to find things on, on the website, uh, trying to complete uh, application forms, that, that sort of thing. These methods are quite quick to set up and give you a really uh, early indication of how easy or difficult your products are to use. Going towards the bottom of the list, you then get more into, into the in-depth uh, analytics and lab-based testing. Now, lab-based testing is, is a really good um, method if, if you're looking to target uh, a very specific journey. Often, uh, clients will use lab-based testing to test things like application forms where there might be you know, financial value added to it um, through you know, a short series of, of quite isolated tests. You can um, identify things really quickly um, that you can then you know, implement uh, changes against. So there's a whole raft of different ways that you can uh, identify how well you're currently engaging with, with your customers and um, what's working well and what's perhaps uh, needs a bit of improvement. Just to throw a couple of examples in, actually, um, the TBC Bank are one of our clients and one of the biggest banks uh, in Georgia. Um, similar to you know, many organizations, they've gone through a uh, you know, massive period of change and transformation. Um, online banking has is, is hugely risen uh, you know, from 20% to 80% of its business. So having services that, that are easy to use, um, uh, people find it easier to, to join online are, are, are critically important. 
Um, we actually worked with TBC um, to help them design um, uh, online on banking kiosk. Um, so we set up a kiosk in, a, in our testing labs um, that were able to get some immediate feedback uh, and apply some quite, quite critical changes actually that, that had a big impact. Another very different kind of example actually, when again we were working with RCN across their, their transformation um, of the website, um, we had to think really smart about how we could get some user feedback um, to, to apply throughout the process. Now they have over 440,000 um, different members. Now it's pretty impractical to you know, try and speak to each and every one of those, um, but we wanted to get a good sample um, from across that demographic. So we targeted uh, events, and one of those events was a Congress. Um, this, this is an event attended by over 5,000 nurses, uh, and these are across the whole, whole spectrum. So right from student nurses all the way through to retired nurses. Um, as you can appreciate, that they've got different needs um, when they access the, the digital services. So being able, being able to test um, across this demographic, um, across um, uh, iPads, phones, and, and desktop, we're able to get some quite critical feedback during the really early stages of development. And this was before the website actually went live. So, so all, all the information and feedback we took from this testing, we applied into further iterations uh, and into the beta site. Um, the end result was actually an award-winning site, um, actually picking up awards for structure and navigation specifically. So it's really important to, to think smart um, about your testing try and get to captive audiences and, and have a think about at the best events that might be able to, to achieve that. Now, everyone loves a, a bit of a bit of a curve. Um, this is um, uh, the cost of change curve. You might be familiar with it. This, this is quite quite relevant to, to talk about in reference to, to user testing. And um, so on the on the left on the y-axis you've got the cost of change. On the x-axis you've got uh, time. So essentially the gist of this, this graph is to show that the earlier on that you're able to test and apply feedback, the lower the cost of applying that feedback. So if you're able to test you know, while something is in perhaps a prototype stage before you've fully coded the solution, it's going to be so much cheaper to um, implement that feedback than it is when you've got a fully coded solution that you might need to unpick to um, implement some changes. So it's really important just to bear in mind to test, test you, you can't test early enough, um, is the gist of it. And it's actually been said that it's a hundred times more expensive to fix a project after deployment than development stage. So that's a nice nice little quote to, to kind of pend around. So you spent a lot of time gathering all this insight, you've got a clear understanding of a few customers on what they want. How do you then actually go, go about applying this insight? Well, one thing's for sure, you, you don't want to you know, lock yourself away for, for months on end or you know, perhaps a year building you know, an incredible solution and then throwing it out there to the market. Because by the time you do that, it will already be out of date. You need to t take a collaborative and iterative approach to this. So we've got an example um, on the screen now. We work with a, a bank locally called Hodge Bank and we're helping them transform uh, some of their application process and bring this online. Um, the way we've done this is, is in stages or, or iterations. So on the left, you've got um, sketches. Now, now these are literally hand-drawn sketches that give you an idea of what the end product might look like. The benefit of this is these are very quick and easy to put together. You can put them in front of the stakeholders um, pretty much on day one, get some initial feedback at, at relatively low cost before iterating it. Um, so move, moving it on to the next stage where you've got HTML prototypes, a bit more higher fidelity. Again, you can actually test against these prototypes, um, gather, gather feedback um, from some of the assumptions that you might make before you fully code it. So, so on the right, that's a you know, fully designed, fully coded solution. So I think the important thing to get across here is that don't lock yourselves away building solutions. Ensure that you, you do it iteratively, so small bits at a time collaborating with the end users, so testing it all the way through. But don't test when you get to the end. Sure, test when you get there as well, but make sure you test um, along that journey. 
again, this just kind of uh, reiterates um, what I've mentioned on the, on the previous slide, really. It's about little and often avoiding the Big Bang. Uh, the benefit of doing this is you bring stakeholders along with you. So if you can put visuals in front of people um, very early days, you can gather that, that feedback. But you can also gather, gather stakeholder buy-in. Um, a lot of the time, I think, on you know, digital projects, uh, some of our clients struggle um, with gaining senior stakeholder buy-in because they can't visualize um, some of the concepts or solutions. So if you're able to put even sketches in front of some senior stakeholders, it can be a really, really good way of helping gain their buy-in, gain their understanding as, as to what you're trying to achieve. This also allows you to, to validate some of the assumptions. So you'll be using your best practice to build these solutions, but you need to put them in front of the end users to actually validate uh, some of the logic that, that you've thought of um, before you actually commit to, to any further investment. And it really is about um, embedding that culture of continuous improvement. So you, you don't just do it once. This needs to be a continual process um, that you implement. And that, this leads us quite nicely on, actually, to, to how do you keep it up. So you don't stop, essentially. And I'm sure everyone's aware, in terms of the digital world, uh, how quickly it, it moves on. As soon as you stop, um, that's when you start moving behind, because you can be pretty sure that your competitors are going to keep going. They're going to keep investing. So we've got a few examples here of different ways of, of keeping it going, essentially. Um, but Sophos um, on the left, who are a global leader in antivirus software, um, they run programs of uh, lab-based testing. So throughout the year, they'll, they'll test with specific journeys um, across their, their security products um, and take any feedback they gather from those into constant refinement uh, of those products. A slightly different angle, um, Royal College of Nursing, They've got a really clever widget on their site, um, which is called Usabilla. Now, this allows um, people who access the site to leave feedback on, on any aspect of the site. They can score the site, or they can leave their anecdotal feedback. Um, this is a great widget, because you can apply this completely site-wide, or you can apply it to specific areas of the site that perhaps you need, you need some attention on. Um, the good thing about this is you, you're getting feedback 24-7. Um, um, it's up to you then uh, what you decide to do with this feedback. A similar tool actually is, is used by Reba. Now, Reba, the Institute of British Architects, um, they've just launched a, a brand new uh, flagship site and they've installed something called Hotjar. Now, this is a really clever uh, tracking tool. So it's a bit of code that runs in the background, um, but it allows, allows you to see exactly how users are interacting with the site, where they're going what they're finding uh, easy to use, perhaps where they're struggling. So perhaps you've designed you know, some journeys um, that are taking users a bit longer to, uh, to, to interact with than you, you perhaps would have hoped. Um, this sort of tool allows you to, to identify that early on and make any corrective um, action. So it really is about implementing a variety of, uh, of tools that allow you to constantly test on an ongoing basis. And these don't have to be uh, particularly expensive, and they don't have to be you know, across all of your products. Um, it could be across you know, key products in particular that um, generate revenue for you. Um, so there's lots of different ways you can approach uh, an ongoing approach to, to user testing. So just to, to wrap up, really, what, what, we've, um, what we've talked about today, how do you, you know, drive results with customer insight? Well, it all starts with understanding you know, who your customers are, not just your current customers, but your future customers. So look at the, the as is, you know, where you are now and where you're trying to get to. You need to work hard to, you know, to understand exactly what they want for your organization. Um, as we mentioned before, customers nowadays, they, they will think that their feet, there's, there's so many options out there for them. Um, if you're not referenceable, if you're not offering exactly what they want, they will um, think of their feet and move elsewhere. So ways that you can help you know, ensure that you're delivering the most uh, effective products is to test. And we talked about you know, some of those measures um, that you can do that. So from the quick and dirty metrics right through to the more in-depth lab-based testing ways of, of engaging with current users. Then it's about implementing that knowledge. So everything that you gain from, from user testing 
um, you need to implement in a way that is iterative and collaborative. So avoid the big bang. Don't, don't lock yourselves away and, and come back producing products months and months later that are already out of date. Um, bring your stakeholders along, along that journey with you, a test as you go through. And the important thing is, is not to stop. So once you've launched these products, they're, they're live things. Um, customer behavior changes. You need to make sure that you're constantly in, in touch with the market and how people are interacting with your products and make, make small changes often rather than waiting for those big bang releases. Great. Well, I hope you've, um, hope you've enjoyed the, the talk so far. Um, I guess it, it's over to you now. Um, what are your next steps after you've, um, after you've seen this talk? What do you need to go away and apply? Uh, are you going to have, have more to think about analytics in terms of understanding your users? Do you need to think about your prospective users a bit more? Um, perhaps you're in a stage where you might be further along the journey and it's testing some products that you've built. Be really interesting to hear your thoughts, and I hope you found um, t today's uh, talk really useful. Okay, so there's been a question about the slides being available after this webinar. Yes, you should be automatically redirected to a page where you can download the slides. Uh, if you have any problems with that, please do get in touch. Other than that, I'd just like to thank you for your time, and thanks to Adam for sharing your expertise, um, and have a great rest of the day. <laughs>